Commander advances. Galactic forces move into alignment. The Maya prophecy approaches. What will happen on that fateful day, December 21st, 2012? The answer, according to the Maya scholar, by flood. Waves gush from the mouth of the celestial dragon. More floodwaters pour from sun and moon symbols on the underside of the monster's body. An aged goddess also pours a jar of flood water onto the earth. At the bottom of the picture crouches a ruler of the underworld. Above the picture, about half of the 15 glyphs have been destroyed, but a few of the remaining ones consistently refer to Black Earth and Black on High. In 2012, will the Earth be annihilated in a great flood, as depicted in the Dresden Codex? Will we bask in the dawn of a new age? Or will it be just another day? There are as many opinions about what will happen on December 21st, 2012, as there are sides to the Great Pyramid of Kukul Khan. to this type of thinking and this type of knowledge and I faced it. I assure you that everyone else who delved into this realm of research has faced it. When I first started looking into this stuff and discovering this stuff and realizing what is wrong with the world, I felt like it was my obligation to tell and convince everyone around me of this new type of information that I have come across. But in essence, years down the line, I've learned that it does not work this way. lesson comes to mind and this is an ancient Chinese lesson where when teachers wanted to teach knowledge they used to tell their students that when someone is thirsty you give them half a cup of water if they remain thirsty then you supply them with the second half this means that first when someone needs to acquire knowledge he first has to be thirsty for it and only after his thirst has been communicated to you, you supply them with half a cup of water. You don't shower them with a full gallon of water, because this is only going to push them away. You give them half a cup. If they ask for the second half, you supply it to them. 
If they don't, it's not your responsibility. They will sooner or later in their lives. The best way for people to see and change their way of thinking is for them to experience the change, is for them to see and research this knowledge rather than someone telling it to them. So if you do care about someone or if you do want to share this information, you got to be very subtle. You got to do it in a smart way and you got to bring the person in. You know? Ask them questions instead of supplying the answers. You're sitting and watching the news with your friend and he's talking about certain situations being broadcast on the news. Ask him, why do you think this is this way? Why do you think these stories are covered? Through such type of discussion, rather than preaching, you will build a certain level of trust or level of comfort between you and the desired listener. And this can help you now to take it to the next step, which is to facilitate ways for him or her to achieve or receive the knowledge that you find valuable. Then the ones who are ready to see and the ones who are ready to be applied will do so. Now why does this happen? Why would people reject such knowledge? Why would people fight such knowledge? Why would people attack you? Well, it happens most definitely for one of the following reasons. hypnotist on planet earth is a oblong box in the corner of the room it is constantly telling us what to believe is real you can persuade them that what they see with their eyes is what there is to see because they'll laugh in the face of 